we are soldiers united together into an army going out to war. Jesus who is the head and we take our instructions from those that God has put in charge. When if a soldier in an army, he may be under the king or the queen of the, or the queen of England, if it is England, or the president of the United States, or whatever you've got in your country, he's under he's under that person, but he's also under the the authority that is under him, such as the sergeant major, the, the captain, the colonel, the field marshal, and we must obey them. An army an army only wins a battle where there is where there is unity, where there is obedience, and where there is a surrender to authority. It gets on my nerves when I see rebellion in the church and Christians that will not submit because where there is no submission, there, there cannot be no victory. And when an army that ever won a battle in the natural world done so when they, when they were under orders and they obeyed their orders and they marched on one accord obeying, we must learn to submit to our pastors. We must learn to submit to those that God has under authority and I hear Christians say, I don't, I don't submit to a pastor, I just submit to Jesus. That's nonsense. If you're not submitted to a pastor, you're not submitted to Jesus. You say there are bad pastors, and there are good pastors. You're in a bad church, that doesn't give you the right not to go to church at all, go to a good one. You say, I can't find a good church, maybe it's not the church that's wrong, maybe it's you. Okay, so we put on, and the reason that we put on the arm of God is because the devil is, is walking around seeing him he may devour. First Peter 5 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, be, be, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may devour. He doesn't. Devour. Thank you, thank you, Sheila, for correcting me on that. Devour. 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 Okay, thank you for correcting me on that. Even I can, even I need to take correction. I thank God I've got a wife that does it. Okay. Now that is what, what uh, Peter doesn't say. He doesn't say, be so be vigilant for your adversary the devil is a roaring lion walking about and so therefore we've got to bind him. He says no, we've got to be vigilant against him. He doesn't say we can chain him up and bind him. No, that day will come in the future. At the moment, we are to be, we are to withstand him and stand up against him and use the authority that you and I have by putting on the armour of God. Now, Jesus overcame the devil with the same power and authority that we have. Now, I know that Jesus Christ was God manifest in flesh. He is the second person of the Trinity. He created all things. All things were created by him. But when Jesus came on earth, he, he overcame, not as God manifest in flesh, but as a man. And, the, and so that we, as men, can overcome as he overcome, because he did it in the way that you and I can do it. If he overcame the devil as God, you and I could not do it, because we are not God. But we can, we can follow Jesus' example because of the way Jesus did it. Let me explain. Jesus never ever worked a single miracle. Listen, to what, listen carefully. Jesus never worked a miracle. He never healed a sick person. He never bound a single demon. He never cast out a single devil until the power of the Holy Spirit came upon him at, at baptism. Then he went into the wilderness. When he came back, he began to cast out devils and work miracles. Now, he did it in the power of the Holy Spirit. He didn't do it as God. He didn't do it as God because as, as God, he created the heaven and earth. All things were created by him. But he did it in the same authority that you and I do it today. He did it. How did Jesus do it? He did it in the power of the Holy Spirit. He did it by using the Word of God. And he did it by a life of total obedience. Luke 4 verse 18. Jesus 
tells us about his ministry. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He have sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Now, it's, he came back, he said, the power of the Holy Spirit is upon me to do it. He didn't do it in the power that he had as the second person of the Trinity. Jesus was fully God and fully man, and he overcame the devil as a man, not using his divine qualities. He did it in the same way that you and I can do it today. He did it in the power of the Holy Spirit. He did it by using the Word of God. He did it by a life of obedience. That's why Je at Acts 10.38, Acts 10.38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So how did he do it? He never worked a single miracle, never turned water into wine, never did it, never cast out a devil until the Holy Spirit came upon him and then he did it. That was the instruction that Jesus gave to the church. Carry that in Jerusalem until you be endured with power from on high. That's, that is how the Father sent Jesus. I read it again. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He have sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. That is how the Father sent the Son to do it. That is how the Son sends us to do it. Because in John 20, verse 21, that's John 20, verse 21, Jesus then said unto them, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so I send you. The way the Father sent me is the way that I send you. The Father sent Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit. You and I are sent power in the Holy Spirit. Notice when Jesus met the devil in um, Luke, we can go, we can go, go back to... We can turn our Bibles to the book of Luke and we'll notice something in the book of Luke here. Luke chapter 4. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan. This is just after he baptized, but was baptized by John, and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Being forty days, tempted the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterwards hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Notice how Jesus overcame. He was from the Holy Ghost, and he used the word of God. And Jesus said, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil take him up on a high mountain, Showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power I will give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be lying. Notice how Jesus' response was, In the power of the Holy Spirit he used the word of God, and he said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. It is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and only him shalt thou worship. Verse 9 of Luke 4. And he brought him to Jesus, sorry, he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. It is written. Notice the devil here is twisting scripture. You've got to... Don't believe everybody that uses scripture. Some people use scripture to try to deceive people into false doctrines. This is what the devil is doing here. It is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in thy hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Now notice how Jesus answered. 
Notice how he overcame him. He overcame him as a man, filled with the Holy Spirit, using the word of God, and he said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And so this, that's how Jesus overcame the devil. He overcame him in the power of the Holy Spirit, standing on and using the word of God. The same power and the same authority that you and I have. The way that Jesus overcome is the way that we can overcome. Jesus cast out devils in the power of the Holy Spirit. We read it in, in um, Acts chapter 10 verse 38. We read that. He cut our, um, our God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power he went about doing good. He all that repression of the devil. That is the same the same power in which Jesus healed is the same power in which you and I heal today. It is the same power. We can do what Jesus did because we do it with the same authority and the same power in which he did it. Okay, I'll, I'm going to move on a little bit now. We're going to look at the ones we wrestle against. The ones we wrestle against. Ephesians chapter 6. It says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, the People's New Testament makes some interesting comments on that verse. And I'm just going to read what the People's New Testament writes. For we wrestle. That means fight them. Hand to hand and grapple. Wrestling, no, if we wrestle, we don't shoot the devil, we wrestle. We wrestle against flesh and blood. That means it's, it's close up fighting. Not against flesh and blood. While flesh and blood may be, may seem to assail us, the real enemy are spiritual powers. That's the real enemy. That doesn't mean we don't deal with the person. No, the devil is who we wrestle against. Remember, that the devil uses people. The devil works through people. And people are responsible for what they do. So I read that again. While flesh and blood may seem to assail us, the real enemies are evil spiritual powers. Principalism powers. This term designates different ranks of evil spirits. There were fallen angels. The terms are also applied to different ranks of... Now we know that in the spiritual world there are degrees of evil. We know that. There are some demons that are more worse than themselves. In fact, Jesus said when a demon is cast out of a person, he goes walking through dry places, he finds seven worse than himself. So there are degrees of evil. So, against the rulers of darkness of this world, Satan is described as the ruler of this world in John 12, 31, John 14, 30, and John 16, 11. And he's called the God of this world in 2 Corinthians 4, 4. He, he uses for his dominion not only evil spirits, but wicked men. And his way is darkness rather than light. Spiritual wickedness. It is likely that the meaning is the same as in Ephesians 2 verse 2 which says that he is the prince of the air that worketh in the children of disobedience. The high place, the hair, is the dwelling place and the medium of these evil spirits. Ephesians 6 13 it says, Wherefore take unto you, take unto you the whole armour of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. So, 